Translimbal approach of doing cataract surgery is a possibility. You can see the keratomentors at the junction of blue limbus and sclera, sometimes in the peripheral sclera or in the limbus. A 2.8 millimeter entry is made. A cystitome is created by bending it slightly to about 45 degrees and that perforates the floor of the tunnel at the limbus and goes into the eye. The chamber is filled with HPMC visco. The entry through a pinpoint opening through the floor of the tunnel at the limbus has many advantages. The visco that is injected into the anterior chamber remains there, doesn't leak out as you can see in the video. So the depth of the anterior chamber remains as much as you have done it when you injected the viscoelastic. The tunnel that you made is enlarged with a blunt keratome. A capsular subplating hydrodissection is done with a special cannula which has which is bent to 45 degrees at about 2 millimeters from the tip. Few drops of balanced salt solutions are required to do a good hydro dissection separating the capsule and the nucleus and the cortex. Nucleus epinucleus mass is rotated within the capsular bag, rotated into the anterior chamber and then it's bisected with the shaft of a 25 gauge cannula which is continuously injecting visco in front of the nucleus so that it doesn't rub on the endothelium. Without stretching the opening that you made in the limbers and the cornea, the nucleus which is half dissected, half divided is removed. Couple of uh, wire vectors can be utilized. This is a special wire vectors which is very narrow. The other end has got a pusher or a rod, 16 gauge rod which is used to push the IOL into the eye at the end of the surgery. After complete cortical aspiration through the main port, it has to be a main port because there are no side ports here. The uh, eye wall is implanted. So the uh, sub incisional cortex is removed by left and right J shaped Simco cannulas. These cannulas are mounted on a silicon bulb so that you can control the amount of infusion of fluid into the anterior chamber to control the depth of the anterior chamber. Many times shallow chamber helps you, many times deep chamber helps you. This can be controlled by visual feedback by balancing the amount of aspiration you're going to do with the syringe and the amount of fluid that's injected into the eye. So the total amount of BSS that's needed is about 20 to 30 milliliters in this technique of surgery. So there is, it's a very low flow technique, low pressure technique. The pressure inside the eye is low throughout the procedure. It's not high and uh, especially it's friendly to zonules and the capsule. This is how you do the, that's another case. You enter it so that you have a small conjunctival frill there through the limbus, through the cornea. It's a little longer than FACO tunnel that you make. The most beautiful advantage is the flap that you have in the conjunctiva at the limbus which seals the wound and which heals the tunnel in a much different way than pure corneal tunnels. AC is filled with HPMC. There is no leak there because the perforation is to enter the cystitome is at the limbus. Rexis can be well designed to whatever size you want. See that there are no striae in the uh, cornea because the pinpoint entry, even uh, when you go to the, there is no overlocking and you can go beyond the uh, limit of your 2.8 millimeter keratome. Apply pressure posterior like that so that you don't have the runoff of the peripheral incision, outside incision onto the cornea. So if you apply pressure on the limbus downwards and direct the blunt keratome upwards to the corneal dome, you will have a beautiful rectangular shaped uh, 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 tunnel. It doesn't extend. It should not extend onto the corneal side on either side, on the right or left side. 
uh, that will minimize the amount of astigmatism that you're going to create. This tunnel, uh, we have been doing it uh, for many years right now. And uh, the post-operative surgeon-induced astigmatism is around 0.5. And if you go a little more anteriorly to the mid limbus, it can correct as much as 1 to 1, 0.25 adapters. So, but if you go anterior scleral, the, the astigmatism it's going to produce is 0 to 0.25. So, you can titrate the amount of astigmatism because be, depending upon where you enter the keratome initially. The length of the tunnel also decides if you want absolutely uh, zero SIA, for example, if you are doing a multifocal or a toric lens, then you can uh, make the tunnel a little longer than what you see here in this surgery. So the uh, expression of uh, the, uh, the left or cortical portion and uh, epinuclear portions can be done by uh, passing a 23 gauge cannula in the middle of the tunnel, direct the cannula parallel to the uh, corneal stroma, corneal uh, stroma, uh, so that the tunnel is opened up maximally and uh, the particles in the anterior chamber has to slide down rather than, uh, uh, you know, that depends upon the opening that you have made by keeping the cannula parallel to the corneal dome. So now uh, the aspiration of cortex is completed with the uh, straight um, Simcoe cannula and the IOL is implanted into the capsular bag. Small people uh, does not have any relevance, so you can comfortably do a good rexis under the iris and you see a little bit of IFIS in this patient, but it doesn't bother the surgeon. You can go, the uh, cortex, the uh, aspiration of the visco has to be complete. You let it go into the bag behind the lens and uh, um, the, the visco that is coating the back of the uh, cornea has to be completely aspirated so that you don't have a pressure rise postoperatively. It's better to avoid uh, hard cataracts, hard nuclei and mature cataracts with the direct limbal, uh, translimbal approach because there will be increase damage to the cornea if you handle it. Uh, so after a certain experience, you can use this technique for all your surgeries. So after uh, removal of the nucleus, we have implanted the lens. There was a um, Argentinian flag extension here, but it could be easily managed without any. Uh, such cases where there is, a, oh, this is a trabeculectomy, which was done 30 or 40 years ago. This patient well controlled pressures. It has come for a cataract surgery and this is a boon for this. This technique is a boon for them. The entrance is temporal. That is the uh, steep meridian in this patient. Vertical meridian is quite flat. So I have made the uh, tunnel a little shorter here so that we can correct certain amount of astigmatism, about 1, 1.25 millimeter astigmatism, which is uh, against the rule here, can be corrected by temporal incision. So uh, you do a good rexis. You see that the, there is no leak of HPMC at all because of the tunnel floor entry with the cystitome. Cystitome should not be bent at the tip to 90 degrees. It makes it very difficult for you to enter. Now uh, enlarging and uh, good hydrodissection. I'm doing hydrodissection from the inferior uh, pole because I do not want to go superiorly, the zonules are going to be quite weak in these patients. I may easily have a zonular dehiscence if I am careless. This technique is extremely friend to, friend, f friendly to zonules. You are doing nothing in the capsular bag and the entire nucleus comes out into the anterior chamber uh, and uh, with the least uh, possible uh, trauma to the zonules. So it is a very zonule friendly and very endothelial friendly technique. So I am bisecting the nucleus, removing it piecemeal. This is a very special vectors which is very small. It's to the size of hemi nucleus and uh, it comes out easily and see that the nuclear uh, pole, superior pole, the leading pole does not get impinged below the corneal wall. So that should not happen. We should make sure that it comes in, the, in line with the tunnel. So you can put the lens inside the capsular bag and uh, that's the end of surgery. There's no need to hydrate the wound because the wound is not stretched in any of these uh, techniques. The Thank you.